Hey guys, Ben here from D4 Labs. I uh, just wanted to give everybody an update as to uh, the progress of my uh, MAG-58 build. Uh, since the uh, unboxing video, I've been able to accomplish a little bit. Um, mostly getting the parts uh, grouped in uh, sub-assemblies and uh, cleaning up some of the rust and uh, grease that the uh, parts came soaked in. Um, but today, what I was going to do is address some of this wood on the stock here. Um, the wood is absolutely gorgeous. It is um, uh, walnut and it's got decades, uh, probably a half century of grime and dirt, uh, dirt and uh, paint as you can see here. Um, let me see if I can get that in there. Some paint uh, on the stock. A little more about that in a minute. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and disassemble it and uh, did some research. Found out that uh, some uh, warm water, about 130 degrees, and some uh, trisodium phosphate, uh, TSP, that's supposed to do a number on uh, getting grease and grime um, out of weapon stocks without damaging it. So we'll give that a shot, see how it goes. Um, but first, this is not just a standard uh, hollow core wood stock. Um, other than the very beefy uh, aluminum butt plate on the back, this guy has uh, some things that might differ from uh, any stock that you've seen before. Um, as you can see on the bottom here, there's a latch. Uh, that latch is to uh, lock it to the bottom uh, bottom of the uh, receiver there once it's inserted in the back uh, into the back of the weapon uh, and also um, which you may not be able to see closely here let me focus there we are right there that is a buffer spring uh, works the same way as the buffer spring that you might be familiar with in your AR-15 uh, it takes the recoiling Op rod group and cushions the recoil a bit. Let's see if I can get that. But unlike the uh, spring you might be familiar with in your AR, uh, this isn't a standard coil spring. Uh, this is actually a stack of Belleville washers, which look like uh, a series of cones uh, that are stacked long end or uh, big end to big end, short end to short end, and uh, make a stack of uh, washers. Uh, I'll see if I can dig up an illustration to put in here. Um, but as we're taking this apart, butt plate comes off with two uh, standard flathead screws. And then inside, there's a very big, what looks like a screw. Comes out easily enough, and I can feel a uh, some kind of ratcheting assembly that's uh, keeping it from just wandering out of place. That's one thing I found with uh, a bunch of these old weapon systems. Uh, I've also restored a, an M2 uh, 60 millimeter mortar and um, generally like to dabble in antique weapons. Um, a lot of these older weapons were just complex. Uh, some of the machining, especially that I've seen in the uh, bipod for my mortar, it was machined bronze, it was gorgeous. Um, so a lot of these weapons are a lot more over-engineered than you might think. Yep, there we go. Got some uh, ratcheting teeth and inside here, let's see if I can get it in here. No, no, no dice, all right. Well, oh, there's a, uh, a small, looks like a uh, spring-loaded collar to uh, keep this from wandering out. Uh, this is the buffer I was speaking of. I'm not going to open up this uh, assembly because it's spring-loaded, but um, you can see well, if we position it. Ah, there we are. Latches on the bottom. Your uh, recoil, uh, recoiling assembly impacts that. And the stack of uh, Belleville springs in here compresses to cushion the blow. Makes it a little easier on itself. Um, but that is the entirety of the assemblies in the stock so I'll go ahead and put it in the uh, 
hot water and uh, trisodium phosphate bath and uh, speak a little bit about some of the information that I found out about this particular kit. Um, let me see, uh, see if I can get one more good shot of that paint before it goes away. I've taken some still photographs as well. Um, I really hope to be able to make this into a uh, print media article as well. That's that's my standard uh, documentation for stuff like this. Uh, these kind of projects. Um, I normally prefer to document, you know, in print, but I figured this is a bit more involved than most. So I'd go ahead and document it for YouTube as well. Well, this is not wanting to stay down, of course. Wood floats. So let me see if we... All right, that'll work. That's soaking at 130 degrees of trisodium phosphate and hot water. And I will set a five minute timer. So, a um, couple of things. I wanted to bring this up. You might have seen in that first video uh, some remnants of paint on a few of these uh, assemblies or uh, parts, uh, notably on the stock, the top cover. Um, there were some on the trigger guard. And you might have been thinking, well, that was a pretty uh, old, you know, kit. Anything could have happened. I've seen painted weapons. Yeah, and you know, it kind of, I missed it the first time. Um, went back and started looking, and it occurred to me that the way that this weapon was painted, the shades of color that were used, and approximately the age of the weapon based on condition, configuration, and, and whatnot, uh, gave me pause. And it dawned on me that this might actually have been um, one of the MAG 58s that were used extensively uh, in the Rhodesian Bush Wars uh, of the 60s and 70s. Uh, and for those not familiar uh, with history, I'll put a link to, uh, to a good Wikipedia uh, read on it. But uh, it was essentially a war against the communists in modern day Zimbabwe. Um, anyway, without uh, going too far into detail about the whys and the whos, the fact is the MAG-58 played a critical part of the fire force concepts that were used by the uh, Rhodesian Light Infantry. Um, so with that hunch, I reached out to some folks, uh, some friends of mine on the internet, and was able to confirm that, uh, and, it, and this wasn't rumor, this was by the uh, company that actually exported the kit, that this kit did come directly from Zimbabwe. So, huge, uh, huge news. This actually is a vintage Rhodesian War Mag 58. So, um, that kind of changed my approach to this project a little bit. Um, I was considering, uh, I was considering rewelding the uh, right-hand side plate, which was torch cut uh, as part of the demilling procedure that had to occur before uh, being imported. Um, but after I spoke with uh, an editor friend of mine at a uh, gun magazine, uh, he urged me to reach out to another gun magazine and um, perhaps document this build with anticipation of writing an article on it. So, um, reached out to another friend of mine and um, I've got an 80% right hand side plate on the way. I've, uh, if you'll notice here, all the rivets are gone and there's no internal rail. Uh, I was removing the rail, pulling out the rivets, and I will de-rivet the rest of this right-hand side plate. Um, that actually goes up to right here um, in anticipation of getting a replacement right-hand side plate here in the next few days, I hope. Uh, anyway, the idea behind this with a new right-hand side plate, most of the sub-assemblies that, that I've uh, seen here are at least serviceable. Some are a bit rougher than others. Um, but one that I did notice needed to be replaced, and 
let me pull this barrel because I have to do that to pull the bipod off. This does not work. Oh well. I'll just pull off the front of the barrel. There we go. One sub assembly that didn't want to uh, cooperate as much was actually the bipod. Um, bipod legs are a bit uh, bent. The tabs here at the back are uh, missing on one side and the actual bipod foot is missing on the other. Um, so really, uh, this was not the best, uh, the best set of parts in the kit. So I've been uh, watching ever since I got this kit on, I've uh, uh, been watching Gunbroker and other websites for parts for the 240 to pop up. Um, that's another thing worth noting. Uh, I did say Mag 58, and that is what this kit is uh, configured like. Um, the Mag 58 was actually adopted by the United States military. Uh, it's currently in service now. Uh, you might be familiar with it. The M240 Bravo. Oh, dismiss. Let's pull this uh, stock out here. But yes, the Mag 58, made by Fabrique Nationale in Belgium, is functionally identical to the M240B that a number of you might be familiar with. Let's take a quick... Oh, yeah. Let's see. Go with the green here. Get some of the... Oh, the paint's coming right out of these grooves. That's great. Um, yeah, this is gorgeous. Once this is done, and uh, I'll continue doing it after this video. Um, once this is done, the only thing I'm going to do to it is uh, maybe finely sand it, rub in some uh, rub in some linseed oil, and call it done. Because this thing is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and with the provenance of this weapon uh, being of the uh, Rhodesian War era, you know, it is... Oh, wow, that is brilliant. The fact that this thing has been doubtlessly in combat, uh, been carried around the bush of Africa, and somehow survived the last probably 50 years or better. You know, it's, it's nothing short of a miracle this thing looks as good as it does. Um, yeah, once this is all done, I'm going to post a before and after photo. Uh, not necessarily in this video. I'll go ahead and get this video out this weekend. But, uh, oh yeah, that'll go in for another five minutes, maybe. Let's see what, what else we can leach out of there. Um, as I was saying, yeah, this Mag 58 is essentially a 240. So, it's my goal for this project to use as many of the old parts as possible, but still produce a beautiful, functional, shootable um, weapon. And I'd like to actually bring it up to, uh, to some modern specs where it makes sense to do so. Um, since I've got the parts kit in, I've ordered a uh, surplus heat shield for the barrel. I was lucky enough uh, to find a serviceable replacement for this bipod one that's not missing all the parts and looks like it came right off the uh, showroom floor so um, I'm gonna keep these part swaps to an absolute minimum uh, but the good thing is for this project unlike my 60 millimeter mortar there actually are serviceable parts being manufactured today so um, there are a lot more parts available there uh, that means they're easier to find they're cheaper and they're normally in better condition. Uh, anyway, thanks for uh, tuning in. I'll go ahead and post up uh, this video this weekend, um, and I'll keep documenting exactly how this is going from a box of parts and uh, getting turned into a serviceable medium belt-fed machine gun. Thanks, guys. See you later.